celebrate the most wonderful time of year. Tune in all month to watch your favorite animated classics, film, and holiday specials only on WFTV. Don't miss out on these fan favorites. It's huge. I'm timing out another quick drop off in temperatures where you live. And a local transportation service for our senior community is losing out on funding. Only nine investigates how that's hurting those who depend on the service. Live next. On WFTV tonight, seven years later, and there's still no sign of a One Pulse Memorial. Now the city of Orlando says it will get the job done, even if it has to start from scratch, something survivors have been waiting to hear. I would like to see a, a memorial. At this point, I might need to be down there holding, dragging people to figure out what we need to do. Now Orlando's mayor shares the city's plan to honor the lives lost. And the mother of an 18-year-old shot to death in a popka says the suspected shooter was her son's childhood friend. I just want to know why he would do that to someone that was always there for him. Tonight, what the victim's father says they found out about their son before he died. Very dependent, very important. Seniors in some Central Florida areas may end up stuck in the house after their transportation service lost its funding. We were very concerned that our funding is always going to be in jeopardy now uh, with the state. Nine investigates why the Department of Transportation is tightening its wallet and what alternatives these seniors will have. This is WFTV Tonight. And we'll have more on those stories in just a minute, but first, temperatures falling tonight across central Florida. Certified meteorologist George Waldenberger tracking it all in severe weather. Center 9 in Georgia may be chilly now, but it's going to be warmer and wetter as we get closer to Christmas. Yeah, each day will be somewhat different as we work our way toward Christmas, but tonight it's cool out, and I pulled my overcoat out for the first time in about a year's time. Mm. Had to put it on tonight, but <laughs> temperatures have dropped quickly. It really depends on your location, though, how cold you are. And here's what I mean. Ocala, 44 degrees. We're not far from the 30s in Marion County, but look at Cocoa Beach. You're at 62 degrees, almost a 20 degree spread over just a few counties. Zooming in, we won't be cold enough to freeze tonight in Marion County, but there could be some frost north of Ocala, a little bit farther to the north of Gainesville, though that's where the freeze alerts are. In College Park, we kind of level out. The wind's still mixing up the air a bit. Now, coming up, we have to talk about a few things. First off, one more cool night, how cool it will be in your neighborhood by morning, then a warm-up, and then a chance for rain that will develop just in time for Christmas. We'll talk about what to expect soon. Martha? A cold weather shelter is open in Lake County. The shelter at Life Point Church is located on East Orange Avenue in Eustis. It's going to stay open until 8 tomorrow morning. People who don't have a way to get to the shelter can take the Lake Express bus for free. And turning now to another big story tonight, the family of a 16 or an 18 year old shot to death in Apopka, sharing more about the tragic details leading up to his death. Jacob Farrell's mother says the suspected shooter was her son's childhood friend. And now prosecutors say they plan to charge that 16-year-old as an adult in the killing. Felicia Ashley spoke with Jacob's family who said they were worried about the boy accused of killing him from the beginning. Marion County deputies trying to figure out what led to a deadly shooting. Investigators say they found a man shot in the Stonecrest subdivision shortly before noon today. He died before first responders could take him to the hospital. Investigators say they accounted for everyone involved in the shooting and have begun interviewing them. And we'll let you know once we learn anything about the victim or the circumstance of the case, Martha. The Florida Highway Patrol, Greg, investigating a deadly wrong way crash on I-4 this morning from Drone 9. You can see the two cars crashed head on in the eastbound lanes. It happened near the Lee Road exit. Troopers say a 32 year old woman from Davenport was driving the wrong way when she hit an oncoming car. She died on the scene. The other driver was seriously injured. Troopers are now trying to figure out how long the woman was going the wrong way. So we do the reports of the of the wrong way driver came uh, from a witness that witnessed it on Maitland. Um, so mile marker 90. We're not sure exactly if that's where they got on. But that's still being investigated. It's unknown if alcohol or drugs may have been involved in the crash. 
Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer says the city of Orlando is now taking the lead on building the Pulse Memorial. The city is now in charge of designing it and fundraising for the project. It comes after the One Pulse Foundation announced last month that it's dissolving without ever building the memorial it set out to create seven years ago. Ashlyn Webb spoke to the mayor today as he hopes to have this memorial completed by the 10th anniversary of the tragedy. One Pulse Foundation responded today saying they are still working through their way, officially dissolving. It says it doesn't have a final disposition of all the foundation's resources just yet, but One Pulse did say it plans to give the city all memorial designs and records of community input on the project, but no doubt there will be an investigation into where the money went. The Flagler County Elementary School that held a controversial assembly this year has a new principal tonight. Pinnell Elementary held an assembly in August just for black students. The children were told they could end up in jail or dead if they didn't perform better on test. The principal resigned. The superintendent recommended the school board appoint assistant principal Carrie McGee to the position. She was the assistant principal at the school at the time of that controversial assembly. Seniors who can't drive in one local county have been turning to this critical transportation service to get them to their doctor's appointments. However, these vans that pick them up may not be running for much longer. Investigative reporter Shannon Butler has more on the reasons behind the cuts and the impact to those who rely on the services. It has been a record-breaking year for our Space Coast and coming up, how it's only going to get busier. And a local state representative is taking a step forward and making sure law enforcement is trained in how to handle people on the autism spectrum. George? So our weather will be changing. Day by day, we'll kind of have different weather in the days leading up to Christmas. So I'll walk you through what to expect, including that chance for rain Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, what the latest trends are showing next. Sky Witness 9 on Channel 9 Eyewitness News, bringing you closer to the scene during live breaking news. Sponsored by Attorney Dan Newland. We are closing out a busy year on our Space Coast. SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 rocket from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station last night. Today we spoke one-on-one -on -one with the CEO of Space Florida to find out where the industry is headed in 2024. Melanie Holt says that he wants to keep that pace going. Two lawmakers from Central Florida are introducing legislation to limit the amount you could be fined by your HOA. Representative Kristen Arrington and Senator Victor Torres filed companion bills in the House and Senate. The bill prohibits fines from homeowners associations from exceeding $500 total. That is half of the current limit. Right now, HOA caps on fines are set to $1,000. Well, we've enjoyed this chilly, whether you had to wear your coat for the first time in a yes. long time. Yes, it's that cold right it's now. It's so nice. It'll it wake is, you up. It's a nice break. Uh, haven't turned on my heater yet. We're not there. Yeah. All right, let's not get <laughs> over. Let's not get crazy. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is windy, though, and when the wind catches you, it feels just a little bit colder. Look at the winds here. Daytona Beach. Uh, they are gusting up to around 20 miles per hour at the coast, and this is going to be the trend really pretty much every day this week. Gusty, and then overnight the winds die down, except if you're right along the lakes or the intracoastal or the coast, it'll stay breezy overnight. Temperatures again, 40s in Ocala, 60s still, Barrier Islands, Brevard County. Still getting that cold air moving in from the north, but the water temperatures of the Atlantic keeping those beach communities a little bit warmer. We have to, we have to zoom way out to see the next storm system, and here it is. You may have heard from people that live on the west coast. They're getting a lot of rain with this. Our next system isn't this one. It's actually farther. It'll pinwheel around this low and it'll arrive just in time for Christmas. And there's a lot of uncertainty as to when it will arrive exactly and just how it will impact Christmas. So here's the current or the latest model trend data showing chilly weather tonight. Tomorrow the clouds return. Breezy, especially along the coast. I know you see a little rain here, maybe a sprinkle at the coast, but generally a dry pattern until Saturday. Saturday, maybe a slight chance of a shower. That's it. But we're still pretty quiet. We start to get a little more humid humid by Sunday, which is Christmas Eve. It's a little warmer by then. There is a slight chance for rain on Christmas Eve, a little better chance Christmas Eve into Christmas Day for some hit or miss shower activity, not a washout. And some of the later or the newest models showing that the rain might not be here yet until Christmas night. So we may push the rain back to Christmas night and the day after, which could include thunderstorms. After that, we could have a significant cold snap for the final days of the year. 
here, but let's get you there first. We got to get through tonight and tomorrow morning. Upper 30s, Marion County, again, north of Ocala, possible frost early tomorrow morning. Orlando, Daytona Beach, not that cold, but still chilly. And then tomorrow, hour by hour, again, a sprinkle along the coast, otherwise mainly dry and a little bit warmer tomorrow. We're back to near 70 degrees in some neighborhoods. Your seven day forecast the weekend always in view. Gradually we warm up day by day again, mainly dry this weekend. There is that chance outside chance for rain into Christmas, but right now looking at Christmas night into the following day for that higher rain chance. Martha. All right, George, thank you. After the break, advocates say law enforcement need to be trained on how to interact with people with autism. Next, how rare it is for agencies to require that type of training next. Weather from Severe Weather Center 9 is brought to you by the Law Offices of Attorney Dan Newland. A local state representative is taking a step forward in making sure law enforcement is trained in how to handle people on the autism spectrum. Yeah, State Representative Paula Stark was in Kissimmee this morning and was part of the Autism Society of Greater Orlando's Autism Awareness Training. It's training she is working to make mandatory, but as Sam Martella reports, the training is only voluntary in most counties. The next legislative session begins on January 9th. The bill does have Senate support. Coming up at our next half hour, an investigation underway into a home near Fort Lauderdale. What we're learning about the blast that injured four families. Money sharing apps like Venmo and Cash App have become a popular target for crooks. The new policies federal lawmakers want the companies to adopt to better help customers who've been scammed. But first, only Channel 9 sat down with the director of MBI after agents helped take down a criminal enterprise operating in Central Florida. Howie says they're continuing to target organized crime. It's a privilege to be Central Florida's chief meteorologist. It's something that I take internally. We pool all of our resources here in Severe Weather Center 9 to give you the latest advanced warning on a storm. I try to get every day right, and I won't stop. I'm here to keep you safe. We first told you last week the Metropolitan Bureau investigation helped take down an organization it says was operating as a criminal enterprise for nearly two decades. Yeah, investigators say up to 80 people a day purchase cocaine from the PR house. Sabrina Majori has been following every step of the story and only on Channel 9 she sat down with the MBI director today to discuss how they're continuing to target organized crime in our area. Stucker says these organizations are being targeted by the MBI and by the 12 local law enforcement agencies that contribute to this task force. The number of inmates in Florida is expected to steadily increase in the coming years. A state report estimates the inmate count will reach more than 88,000 by the end of June. It's expected to rise annually before hitting more than 94,000 in the 2028-29 fiscal year. This follows a drop in the inmate population during the pandemic. The state is expanding its conservation efforts to prevent farmlands from being used for housing construction. Today, Governor DeSantis and state leaders approved spending $19 million to conserve rural land used for cattle. They also expanded a list of agricultural properties the state could help shield from development. They approved a list of 258 farms, ranches, and forests that could be preserved. Greg? And Martha, some Lake County residents fear a new development could impede on the town of Lady Lake too fast. A group has been working to stop a developer from presenting a conceptual idea that would build a community of hundreds of manufactured homes on this land in the Weirsdale area. Daryl Matthews heard from residents about their concerns today. The town of Lady Lake told us the property is in unincorporated Lake County and to date again, as he mentioned, there are no applications for development on that property. If things change, we'll of course let you know. Longwood first responders and hospital officials worked together today to help improve their response to major emergencies. Nurses and doctors worked alongside firefighters on a mock mass casualty scenario involving a crash between a car and a golf cart. Firefighters provided immediate treatment and triage to child mannequins before taking them to Orlando House. Officials say they decided to do this because of a recent uptick of golf cart accidents involving children. We did a study looking at ATVs versus golf carts, and the golf carts are younger children and more head injuries. Officials tell parents make sure your children are properly restrained in golf carts and to follow the same road rules as driving a car. 
New tonight, a doorbell camera captured a powerful house explosion in West Park, Florida, near Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, a family of four, Greg, including two children, were pulled from the debris and rushed to the hospital. ABC's Victor Akendo has the latest from investigators now working to figure out what caused the blast. Transportation officials say flight cancellations are at their lowest point in five years, but passenger complaints are still sky high. That is according to a new report from the U.S. Public Interest Research Group. It shows 35% of complaints this year were about flight problems, and that includes delays, missed connections, and refunds. And a lot of the airlines have been dragging their feet in issuing these, those refunds, even though they have to provide them within seven days if you paid by credit card. The U.S. Department of Transportation says it's holding airlines accountable for these issues, and this includes an online dashboard showing which airlines offer vouchers whenever there's a significant delay or cancellation within its control. If you want to get your passport soon for a future trip, you'll be happy to hear this. After years of delays, processing times for U.S. passports are back to pre-pandemic levels. The State Department says it's finally through a backlog that piled up during the pandemic. Now it'll take up to eight weeks to get a passport or up to three weeks for an expedited application. It is the height of the holiday season, and as you look for last-minute gifts for loved ones, many of you are using mobile apps to make those final purchases. But that puts your wallet at risk as many people are falling victim to scams. Washington correspondent Ariel Hickson is on Capitol Hill speaking with lawmakers who want to push app protections in place. Colorado Supreme Court has removed Donald Trump from the state's 2024 ballot. The court said today the former president is not an eligible candidate because of the 14th Amendment. It contains vague language that forbids officials who take an oath to support the Constitution from future office if they engage in insurrection. The amendment was ratified following the Civil War and has only been applied twice since 1919. Several other states have cited the amendment to try to keep Trump off the ballot, but none of those attempts has been successful. Colorado Colorado's ban will be placed on hold pending an appeal until January 4th. Eagle Pass, Texas observed record-breaking levels of illegal border crossings yesterday. Yeah, Martha, how the state is attempting to address the issue with a new law. Next, George. Yeah, temperatures again dropping quickly, but tomorrow morning it will feel completely different based on where you live. Coming up, we'll talk about why this is and then more changes for Christmas. The battle over the border is heating up in Texas. Governor Greg Abbott signed a new law allowing state and local police the power to arrest migrants suspected of crossing illegally. ABC's Myra Villarreal has more from critics calling the law unconstitutional. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says a coronavirus subvariant is now the fastest growing strain of the virus. The CDC says subvariant JN.1 is now causing about 20% of new COVID infections across the country. The strain already dominates in the Northeast, where it's estimated to cause about a third of new infections there. The CDC estimates the spread of the subvariant more than doubled in the U.S. between late November and mid December, perhaps getting a boost from holiday travel and waning immunity. As of December 9th, only about 18% of adults had received the latest COVID-19 vaccine. All right, George is in right now, and it is 50 yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Chilly. Quick drop off in temperatures, mm -hmm. but the temperatures depend on where you live, mm -hmm. right. obviously. And the reason why I say that is because when we look at the map, you can see Cocoa Beach is in the 60s, and in Marion County near Ocala, we have low 40s. So that's a 20-degree temperature drop. And here's why we're talking about it. We still have the cold air advecting in. This is on the backside of the storm system that brought record rainfall this past weekend. But if you zoom in, you can now see the winds are actually turning a little more out of the northeast. Here's why that's important. First off, the water temperatures at the beaches mid 60s. When the winds come off that warmer water, it keeps the beach communities a little bit warmer at night. It also mixes up the air. It keeps the uh, cold air from settling in at low levels where our thermometers read them and also this blanket of clouds that can help keep temperatures a little bit warmer at night. So because of that much cooler inland than near the coast, especially Brevard County overnight through tomorrow morning. So here's what I mean tomorrow morning in Orlando, just like this morning, upper 40s, you're wearing the coats again. And in Marion County, we could actually have frost, upper 30s. But when we take you over to Brevard County, there will be some beach communities in the 60s tomorrow morning. So 30s Marion County, 60s, some of the beaches tomorrow morning. All depends on location, right? Location, location, location. A lot of clouds and a little bit warmer tomorrow. 
Over the next few days, the humidities will build, but you'll really notice it by the weekend, especially Sunday, which is also Christmas Eve. But still, a few locations a little bit warmer. I think a lot of people can appreciate 70 degrees. And then slowly, the warm-up. Again, we're not talking a rapid warm-up to 80 degrees. As a matter of fact, we may not hit 80 before 2024 begins, but we are going to be talking about our next system. At this point, it looks like there's a chance for at least some spotty rain Christmas Eve into Christmas Day, but latest trends show a later arrival. So Christmas night into the following day, rain, maybe even a few th thunderstorms, and that would be <laughs> followed by a more significant cold snap for the end of the year. So your Christmas forecast, plan on morning temperatures in the 60s. We'll keep an eye on the radar in case we see a few spotty showers with a chance of rain. Doesn't look like a washout. Temperature is a little warmer in the 70s. Here's your seven-day forecast. The weekend always in view. Again, looking at that warm-up slide chance of weekend rain Monday into Tuesday. Higher rain chances will be later in the day into Tuesday. And over on Channel 9 at 11, we'll have the latest forecast, including new model data for Christmas. Alex. George, we've got some college hoops after the break. The Florida Gator is in Charlotte tonight for a marquee matchup with Michigan. Highlights in some buzzer beaters from North Carolina when we come back. Closed captioning ensures all viewers have access to our programming here on Channel 9 and provides a critical link by delivering important local coverage with stories that impact our community. Closed captioning on Channel 9 is sponsored by attorney Dan Newland. What a difference a year makes for the Orlando Magic. This time last season, they were 5-20, and one of the worst teams in the NBA. One year later, this team has done a complete 180. So good win for Florida tonight. Mm -hmm. Got the uh, Gasparilla Bowl press conference in Tampa tomorrow. UCF Georgia Tech on Friday. The bowl game a couple days away. So good luck to the Knights. Yeah, not enough going on for you. <laughs> it's a little busy time of year. It's yeah. fun though. You got busy for you minutes. too. Yes. Right? Uh, easy, nice and quiet weather. So as you're finishing up all of your holiday odds and ends, just a little chilly tomorrow morning and then warming up as we head toward Christmas. So Chance you're saying that UCF doesn't have to play in the weather that their stadium <laughs> had last Saturday. Uh, no. That's what he said. A lot nicer. A little more down <laughs>